um, like to bring here Mr. Uh, Honorable Javed Elahi. is an accomplished attorney and a council member at Monte Sereno City Council. Uh, he previously served at the West Valley Mission Community College Board. Has also served on the Board of Trustees and Executive Board of Santa Clara County Bar Association. Please welcome Mr. Lyon. Of this, I'd like to invite uh, our dear friend who has come all the way from Yuba City along with his friends and family, Dr. Jasbir Kang. Dr. Jasbir. Dr. Jasbir is a medical doctor, prominent leader, and community activist in the Punjabi American community in Yuba City. He co-founded the Punjabi American Heritage Society in 1993 and the Punjabi American Festival 1995 to foster culture, cross-cultural understanding <laughs> and connect young Punjabi Americans to their cultural heritage. Welcome, Dr. Khan. Finally, I'd like to introduce my very old, dear friend, Professor Randolph Langenbach. He has served as a senior analyst for Federal Emergency Management Agency and as a professor at the UC Berkeley. In 1981, he received an Indo-American Exchange Fellowship in India and then has done renaissance of UNESCO after 2001 Gujarat earthquake and 2005 Kashmir earthquake. He has done a lot of work in Indian subcontinent, whether it's India, Pakistan, Kashmir, so he can bring that perspective. With that, <laughs> welcome, <laughs> Professor. Uh, with that, I would like to bring our two uh, moderators, uh, Ritu Ja, a journalist uh, who runs Indica News. Uh, she's from India. Uh, please welcome Ritu. Ritu, please come on. Now. And I'd like to invite Mariam Turab. She's a Pakistani journalist. Uh, she's going to help us balance the uh, forum tonight. <laughs> Welcome, uh, Mariam. Please come here. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the second session of Ibadat Khana. Today, we have lined up a very great panelist and who are going to talk about universal intolerance. <laughs> So, we have seen and we already heard from Justice Katsu how things are going around in the Indian subcontinent. So, the main focus area of today's event and what they are going to focus on are two main things. One is universal tolerance and sole eco. I know by now you must be knowing who has started or who introduced sole eco. It was none other than uh, Emperor Akbar to describe universal peace, interfaith tolerance, and equal treatment for all. Ibadat Khana is a non partition movement, so I have a humble request to everybody. There might be all different type of questions today, so maintain peace through the event and after the event as well. So panelists will get five minutes each to talk about themselves, the views, and the thoughts, and how to move forward and take this movement. So we are going to talk and focus on that, and you'll be getting five minutes each. So maintain that. We all know the vision of Ibadat Khana was, start, was laid down by none other than our Justice Kanzu. And the concern was because of the rising intolerance, polarization, racialism, lynching, economic downturn, and also the fear of being targeted as anti-nationalist. The fear has gripped not just the minorities in India, but also the corporate sectors. I don't know whether you are aware, just recently, just last week, uh, one of our veteran industrialists in India, Rahul Bajaj, I hope you all know the Bajaj company. He made a great statement during Economic Times Award ceremony in front of the Indian Home Ministers. And he said, without fearing, 
that I quote and unquote, there's a hawa of intolerance in India. But what I feel that vision that the intolerance is not just back at home or back in India, but we also feel it in the US. And every now and then we cover the story, we read about it. So this is a main vision, and that is the reason we all are today here to talk about how we South Asian diaspora and what is our vision to move forward with Ibadat Khana. And that is the reason we are here, and you all are free to ask any questions, and I hope our panelists won't be answering any of those. So with that, I start with the first question. I hope you all are ready. That's very simple. So what you view, because uh, I'm talking about intolerance and tolerance, and uh, so what is your view? And in, in your view, what is the concept of universal tolerance, if you can give? Uh, you want to start with Professor first? Well, do we speak for five minutes? Yeah, you, can, about you can speak about yourself yeah, and, yeah, and okay. what is the universal tolerance. Okay. Well, they can sit down and sit Yeah, mm -hmm. I, 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 if I may, I think. Yeah, absolutely. You can sit down. Yeah, I, I mean, may I stand? Oh, yeah, I yeah, yeah, yeah. I would, since this is sort of the introduction here, and it, I um, particularly want to thank. Uh, uh, Kasawar Jalali for inviting me to this and his parents uh, in Kashmir for housing me after I broke my leg in the mountains um, outside of Jammu and, and uh, Srinagar and uh, in, in between the two and um, so uh, I you know in terms of the international tolerance I you know I was not raised particularly religious. I uh, come from a Christian background. And when I um, was married, I was actually married to a Holocaust survivor Jew from Romania uh, for many years. And, uh, and the, so I, and then going to India in 1981 on an Indo American Exchange Fellowship um, really. A little, oh, is that better? Yeah, oh, okay, yeah. Uh, here I was trying to persuade him to pull the mic away because it was resonating, but uh, here uh, I hope that it's working now. Um, I, uh, it really opened me up to a whole world. I mean, I felt that we're all citizens of the world, as it was stated earlier, and I felt really very much a part of a world by having uh, a world that I actually f uh, found myself relating to very well and getting close to at the very same time. It was extremely different than the world I grew up in. And uh, then the opportunity to go to Kashmir um, was extremely valuable to me because it was there that I discovered a building type which now has uh, been at the core of my academic and uh, uh, actually, um, earthquake hazard mitigation work worldwide. I learned about how masonry actually holds buildings up if it's timber laced or the timber frame. And I wrote a book for UNESCO, which is here and it's on Amazon and uh, available worldwide now, Europe and here and in India. It was published by uh, UNESCO first. And uh, I uh, um, can say this too, that I just published a book on Rome. And that brings me to a very interesting insight that I've had about Hinduism, which is the modern religion, which is the most like the ancient Roman religion before the invention of Christianity, which had multiple gods. So it's, extremely important to kind of think of each of these religions and, and uh, uh, Islam and all of that that came later is actually more um, as more the rules of Judaism than does Christianity and it has a very direct connection across to the ancient world uh, when the religions that we know 
where it began. <coughs> so I do say that, and um, and I wanted to say those about the internationalism of, and to be able to connect it right across the world to ancient Rome is a very interesting thing in that respect and at the very same time uh, where um, Islam is very much a world religion. Thank you. It's really an honor to be here. Uh, I'm a very common person among the distinguished uh, panel here. Uh, I became American by choice. I came here 33 years ago. Despite many challenges, my love for this country continued to grow. It provided me the opportunities, reward for my hard work, and above all, acceptance. Tolerance to bardash karna. We need acceptance. So I desire and wish same or even more for my fellow brother and sister who live in South Asia. Honorable Justice have mentioned a population of 1.3 billion, but the whole South Asia is 1.9 billion, one-fourth of the population on this planet. They deserve the best. Now about India and Pakistan, I was talking to Mariam, she called me a few days ago. She said she's from Karachi, and her parents were from Lucknow, right? And my parents were from Faisalabad. So I said, are you Pakistani or I am Pakistani? <laughs> <laughs> so though I was born in Indian Punjab, you know, which has been unfortunately partitioned again and again, it's a long story for another time, I believe there are only two faiths in the world. So you can count, make a long list. One is called love, and other is called hate. And we are here to discuss how our love here, together, going to break the walls of hate. It's not just the religion. There are so many other layers of hate. Casteism, the worst disease we have in our region. You know, we talk about religious coexistence. We are talking about tolerance. No, we have to accept others as equal. Only then we can create a society where everybody can flourish. You know, we were talking about Europe earlier, and they had a nobility and clergy, raja or priest. And they were expressing the commoners. But in India, there are so many layers, and the commoners fight with each other, still fighting. Indian subcontinent, as Honorable Justice mentioned, we have one of the oldest surviving civilizations in the world. And I was reading a book called Gun, Germs, and Steel. Probably professor must have read that book. It talks about uh, how certain civilizations became more successful, how they were able to invent technologies and able to flourish and progress. What happened to our subcontinent? Despite being an ancient civilization, but we spent a lot of time fighting with each other because we never felt we are equal. Unless we send this message of equality, that we are all equal. And I know I have two minutes left. I'm going to briefly tell, since I'm supposed to represent Sikh community, but I think I represent all of you. We were talking about Guru Nanak. Basic, what Guru Nanak taught us was, believe in a creator. We call it Nam Japna. It's in all of us. It's not a property of any religion or any brand. Spirituality exists in all humanity. Then he focused, work hard. Work ethics, work hard. And share your earnings 
with other fellow human beings, not just your family, not just your religion, not just your caste, if we follow simple principles of sharing, we can make this planet heaven. We don't have to die to go to heaven. We can make heaven here. To me, I feel America is a heaven. You're talking about equality and, and uh, one of our gurus said, Manas ki jat, sabbe eke pechan ho. Simply means, we are all, humanity is one. There is only one caste. There are no other castes. All these castes are made by who? Who made those? We made it. And it's, we know this is a bad idea, why don't we end it? Who's gonna end it? We. We need to say we reject that idea. Let's invent a new idea of equality. We are all equal. And lastly, and as my closing point is that we need to create a, as a diaspora, you know, we live in America. Justice Sao is here visiting us. He's going to go back. Some, but most of you live here. At least we should get united. If we can, we may not have the same influence to reach out to people in the subcontinent, but at least we can get united. And if you hurt, I should feel your pain. If Kashmiri is hurt, I should feel your pain. If Hindu is a hurt, Sikh should feel their pain. If Sikh is hurt, the others should be, others feel pain. If we only feel our pain and not feel others' pain, then what are you talking about? There's no quality. Quality is when we feel for each other. And if we, at least in Bay Area or California, start feeling and standing up for each other, it shouldn't be like Kashmiri asking over, we have a total censorship there. We should be questioning, why, why is there censorship there? Why not there is freedom for everybody? Why not there is people who should be able to express their views in a democracy? So we need to, at least here, create that civil society and put pressure on American policy makers to ask the largest democracy in the world to be accountable. We can do that. America is very powerful, but we cannot do it unless we work together. If we only say my pain is hurt more, we need to feel others' pain. Less work. I will say this word from a French Revolution. Uh, it says, long live equality and enlightenment. Let's be enlightened. That's the only way we can make world better for everybody, not just for us. Thank you. I'm going to go on the, por I'm going to go on the podium if you don't mind. Uh, I, I really wanted to thank Justice Katsu for his boldness and willing to work with those with diverse views. Uh, we all have diverse views. This capsule represents a lot of views that we all agree on. There's obviously some views that we may not agree on. But the, but the question is, where do we go from here? So, so I was going to ask you, why do you think there's so much intolerance with all the peace and love and compassion and good feeling talk that everybody talks? I don't think if you, I mean, there is, a, there is some people now uh, that talk hate all the time. This is a serious conference, perhaps the first of its kind in the Bay Area, if not in the United States. And we're looking at promoting justice, civility, and above all, humanism. This is, form is designed to bring together the Hindus, Sikhs, Muslims, Christians in one place. Uh, and the, the question is, there's a narrative that goes around of hate that is perpetuated from place to place, from people to people, and perpetuated in a very fast manner. And why does that happen? I think the answer to that is right in front of you guys. At least the people who have their iPhones out of their pockets, it's in your pockets. If you think about it, the, the whole problem started when Adam ate the apple and we got thrown out of heaven and we're down here on earth. Now Apple is doing another thing. It's trying to, and not Apple personally, but it's trying to make this earth hell. Uh, since 2009, Apple has sold more than 1.5 billion iPhones. 
There are 3.3 billion smartphone users in the world, which is 42% of the world's population. There are 2.65 billion worldwide on social media. India has about 326 million, Pakistan 35 million, Bangladesh 30 million. There are 167.4 million on YouTube, 2.45, and we're talking billion on Facebook, 1 billion on Instagram, 1.5 billion on WhatsApp, 126 million on Twitter. India share of these, 21 million on YouTube, 24 million on Facebook, 69 million on Instagram, 400 million on WhatsApp, and 79 million on Twitter. Pakistan and Bangladesh together have over 50 million on Facebook, over 8 million on Instagram, over 12 million on WhatsApp, and another 2 million on Twitter. Given that Facebook owns Instagram and WhatsApp, its net is spread to 5 billion users. So I didn't give you these numbers so that you could rush out and buy Facebook stock. For us, you probably already have some, but <laughs> if you don't know, maybe you should. I, I bring this up because the prevalence of smart ass media, as I would call it, has played a disastrous role in this century. The concern is now is not that there is fake news, but how this fake news travels everywhere because of the vast propagation of media. And in fact, what, what has become is unwittingly we all have become fake media. You know, we get these messages and we spread them out. Uh, you may have seen Sarah, Sacha Baron Cohen, alias Borak. Perhaps he, d he did not know that he had a serious sight. I quote from him on the propagation of hate through the internet. Democracy which depends on shared truths is in retreat. An autocracy which depends on shared lies is on the march. Hate crimes are surging as are murderous attacks on religious and ethnic minorities. What do all these religious trends have in common? All these hateful violence is being facilitated by a handful of internet companies that amount to the greatest propaganda machine in history, Facebook, YouTube, Google, Twitter, and others reach billions of people. Why do these platforms play such a divisive role? It is because stories that appeal to our basic instinct and trigger outrage and fear spread faster and keep us engaged. The algorithm these platforms depend on deliberately amplifies the type of content that keeps users engaged. So I may be the biggest hate monger in the world. But Microphone. That's my point. Microphone. Yeah. Mic. So I, I may be the biggest hate monger, but if I don't have the mic, you will not hear me. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> So what these social media are doing is they're giving you the mic. They're the microphone. You see one message that seems kind of cute and you spread it around and it gets spread out further and further. I saw an amazing uh, post on uh, WhatsApp where a person had vilified the Pakistan courts because they had decided to release, to let Nawaz Sharif go to England for treatment. And Imran Khan is the one who actually said that's okay. That one post actually vilified everybody. It vilified Nawaz Sharif, who you know, has corrupt charges against, corruption charges against him. It vilified the courts because they let him go. It vilified, vilified Imran Khan because he was part of it. And yet Imran Khan's supporters were the ones who were propagating it. I think you know, that was a brilliant piece of uh, uh, <laughs> propaganda spreading. And we need to watch out for what we spread out. It should not affect our structure and hateful things should not be spread like that. If Google had uh, Facebook during his time, my time is up, so we'll try to catch it some other time. But thank you so much for listening. I appreciate that. Now, listen to me. In, in, in this world, there are two worlds. This world is not just one world. There are two worlds. One is the world of the highly developed countries, uh, North America, Europe, Japan, Australia, New Zealand, China. This is one world. The other is the world of the underdeveloped countries, which include the Indian subcontinent. Our national aim of the people of the Indian subcontinent must be to transform and uplift India and bring it into the ranks of the developed countries. Because unless we do that, 
we will remain condemned to poverty, massive poverty, massive unemployment, massive healthcare issues, massive malnourishment, and a host of massive problems. The only way out for us to uh, escape from poverty, the worst thing in life is poverty. The only way out is to uplift India from the ranks of the underdeveloped countries and bring it into the ranks of the developed countries. This must be our national target. And for that, we have to wage a historical united struggle. It will not be easy. There are powerful forces. We don't want us to achieve that goal. So we have to uh, be united. Unless we are united, we will never be able to achieve our goal of transforming our subcontinent and bringing it into the ranks of the highly developed countries. If we keep fighting in the name of religion and caste and language and reason, we will remain condemned to poverty. And that is the worst thing uh, possible. So, Ibadat Khana is the way out, where everybody is given equal respect, where everybody is treated equally, where there is no discrimination, which unites us, uh, which takes us on the correct path uh, which shown by the Emperor Akbar of going forward unitedly. And that is why I, I have again said we are playing a historical role. We have started a historical movement, this Ibadat Khana movement, of bringing back India on the correct tracks. The, the train had been derailed by the present rulers and we are putting it back on the correct path, because by unity alone we'll be able to achieve our objective of abolishing poverty and the other host of social evils plaguing India. Thank you.